Hello, my name is Mariana Dahan. I'm the founder and CEO of the World Identity Network and previously the global coordinator of the Identification for Development, a program that I have initiated at the World Bank. I feel very privileged to be here and to speak in front of you today, in front of those who fight for freedom. And the story I want to share with you is the one of a young girl who stood up for her own freedom, her own dignity, and her own identity. Born in the poorest country on the continent, she chose to defy the ancestral legacy and cultural, if not religious, dominion over her identity. It is the story of this girl that made me who I am today. I will tell you more about her. But before, I want us to take a moment and think why it is so important to have a proof of your identity and to be able to control your identity. Think about this. Through our existing family connections, we are being defined as a leaf on a branch of a genetic family tree. And by doing that, we are being defined as part of a chain of humans, of an ancestral tribe, of a society, of a country. Often, it dictates how we define ourselves and what choices should we be making and who should we be becoming. But as we grow older, and are able and capable of acting for ourselves. Who has the right to dictate this to us? What if we want to define ourselves differently, choose our identity, our gender, our political views, our religion? And by defining us, who has the right to hold a proof of our ID? Let's take a step back and think why it is so important to have a proof of identity. In order to achieve even the most basic things so many of us take for granted, there is one thing that is central to everything, identity. Our ability to participate in the modern world hinges entirely upon our ability to get a legal proof of who we are. Lack of personal ID, a simple ID document, takes away your ability to access even the most basic services, like enrolling in school or accessing healthcare. But here is the hardest part. Without a proof of your personal ID, you can literally become invisible. Why? Because you cannot be counted or accounted for. In this sense, we call the invisible children invisible because nobody knows that they exist except the family members, the closest ties who are aware of their existence. Often, they are falling prey to human traffickers who are using fake ID documents to smuggle them across the borders, selling them to sex brothels, coercing them into modern slavery, or using them for organ trade. Tiny little human beings used for organ trade. As I'm saying this, my thoughts go back to the young girl I mentioned at the beginning of my talk. That young girl, like many others in the post-Soviet Republic of Moldova, was running away from domestic violence and abuse. She was alone, hungry, desperate, and the prospect of a better life abroad was so enticing. But this is exactly what the human traffickers were looking for, they want to exploit the vulnerability of this young girl and her legal invisibility. 
That young girl was me. What saved me from the hands of the human traffickers? I got extremely lucky. So many were not as lucky. Moldova is a prime source country for victims of human trafficking. And it's not just Moldova. China is one of the countries most affected by human trafficking. India, Nepal, Thailand also do not meet the minimum requirements for elimination of human trafficking, according to the latest Trafficking in Persons report. Russia, Mexico, the United States, human trafficking is a global program. It generates a lot of money, about $150 billion annually. Lack of ID is at the core of the human trafficking. Out of the one billion people in the world today who have no way to prove who they are, who are invisible, nearly half are children and minors. So what can be done about it? Until recently, a vision for the future where everyone on Earth would have a proof of their identity was a dream, an unattainable goal. Thankfully, a combination of awareness, international will, and technology offers new hope. So let's take it step by step. Number one, awareness. Ever since the launch of the ID4D program at the World Bank, I have been advocating around the world for the need of a personal ID. With ID4D agenda, I wanted to make everyone count and give a personal identity to everyone, to the billions of people who have none, most of them living in the world's poorest countries, a lot of them here in Asia. Advances in unique identification tools and distributed ledger technologies, such as the blockchain technology, offer new hope and new possibilities to fight the humanity's worst crimes. But old identification models are not working anymore. And we came to realize this after some high-profile security and privacy breaches, such as Equifax in the United States, or the Adar program in India, or Facebook globally. We came to realize that we need to build better, more secure and human-centric identity systems that give control to the individual over their own identity data. We came to understand that we need to do something better. And this is why last year we launched the World Identity Network, which promotes the self-sovereign identity. Self-sovereign identity has the important ability of proving someone's identity when needed, but also preserving someone's anonymity and pseudonymity when desired. This is because it uses the zero-knowledge proofs, which cryptographically encrypts everyone's data. And everyone's personal data is not being shared among third parties. This is very important. And we need the international community to come together to help implement this. So here we come to the second point in my initial action items list, which is international will and collaboration. One step in this direction is a partnership between the World Identity Network and the United Nations agencies, which brought together civil society, private sector organizations, the government, non-governmental organizations, everyone working together to help solve this challenge. We called it Blockchain for Humanity, and I'm very proud that one of the first 
pilot of this partnership is taking place in Moldova, my country of birth. In this specific case of fighting the human trafficking, we are working on top of existing legacy systems to make sure that no child is being taken out of the country with fake identity documents that are produced by smugglers and human traffickers. We leverage the immutability feature of the blockchain, making sure that every transaction, in this case, an attempted exit with a minor, is being permanently recorded on the ledger, so that if a human trafficker is being caught at the border, he cannot get away, he cannot bribe his way out, which is something that is happening and that perpetuates the vicious cycle of trafficking. Technology is a great enabler of this case. But how do we make sure that we got it right this time? And here we talk about my third point, the role of technology and its power to solve one of the humanity's greatest challenges. As a global community, we need to realize that technology can be both used for good and for evil, and that we absolutely need to come together and rethink the concept of identity, continuously improving and crafting this cornerstone of our human evolution being on the lookout for the best approaches and solutions that technology can offer. The risks of creation of an Orwellian system are too obvious to be ignored. We need to be mindful of that. When designing identification systems, we need to make sure that we are not putting the children at a greater risk that, in fact, we are designing systems that are turning the invisible children into invincible ones, which is the motto of our partnership with the United Nations. When I was fleeing my father's violence and abuse, the last thing I wanted is for my identity to be revealed. I was afraid to be found. Most of the time, the abusers and the human traffickers are working hand-in-hand hand with police officers and corrupt officials. We need to stop that, and technology can help. We need to make it easier for victims to escape and for human traffickers to be caught. Here comes the biggest questions of all. How do we do that while also preserving our fundamental human right to privacy. How are we making sure we are not building a surveillance system? We need to ensure that our identities will not fall in the wrong hands and will not be used by authoritarian regimes or superpowers who will be tracing us down. People need to be able to make sovereign decisions about who can access and control their data. And if we do not get this right, then the identity systems that we envisioned for ourselves to protect us can be used as surveillance tools and can exclude more than they can include. Growing up as a poor child in the post-Soviet Republic of Moldova, in the poorest country in Europe, I found myself defenseless and exposed at risks. I know this firsthand. I know how it feels. And I know that the human traffickers are on the lookout for this. I recently gave a TED Talk which tells about my personal story and my motivation behind the work at the World Identity Network, but I would like you to also visit our website and discover many other stories of many other people 
who uncover the true meaning of identity and how a proof of identity was able to change the life that they were leading. One last thought that I want to share with you is that identity is not only about the invisible children, the refugees, the trafficked people, the vulnerable. It is also about you. Identity is about each and every one of us, about our children. We are building this future together, and we need to make it right. Thank you. <laughs>